Hey guys, Chef Wu Ken here. How are you today? How are you doing this Labor Day weekend? Um, I'm going to be cooking a very famous noodle dish. Pretty much, it took a while to uh, get addicted to it, but after they got addicted to it, it's been requested wherever people go to restaurants. It's called a uh, beef chow fun. Okay, now typically, the fun, the noodles, comes fresh. But obviously, not everybody has access to uh, an Asian grocery store. So they have a dry version, and it's wide noodles. Okay? So basically what we did was we parboiled one packet of it until it's al dente. So it's not overcooked, not undercooked. We took it out. We rinsed it under cold water just to stop the cooking. And we drained it and we set it aside. Okay? Um, the ingredients that we'll be using today, and you probably saw a video before, but I just want to show you again because it's been really on popular demand and I've been getting a lot of requests to do it over again. I'm using flank steak. Flank steak is a very tender cut. Basically, I cut it very thin, right? And we're going to marinate it. Right, so it absorbs additional flavor, as well as we're going to add a little bit of baking soda just to tenderize it even more. So it's not, it's a nice bite to it, okay? And then we'll add fresh bean sprouts. Now notice, the bean sprouts are, trans, are beautifully opaque. It's not grayish, golden, no, no, no uh, uh, brown, brown uh, sauce in it. It's perfect, all right? This is what you want. Okay, and we have scallion. So just three ingredients. This has been washed. I'll show you how I chop it. Scallion, bean sprout, noodles, and beef. All right. And then, of course, we want to season it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some fresh garlic. Now, my sister had grown some garlic, so she gave me a couple of bulbs. But I usually buy the package that's already um, de-shelled. And those are elephant um, garlic, size garlic. And so it's bigger, it's more marketable, but it's a milder flavor. This one is from the clove. This is a little bit more potent, so this is pretty good. In the sauce that we're going to be adding, we're going to add a little bit of oyster sauce. Yes? There's a little oyster extract in it, but it's very, very good. And we're going to add a little bit of dark soy sauce, which is going to give it the caramel coloring. So you might be under the impression that when you order chow fun in a store, it might be a little dark, and they probably, you might have thought they added a lot of soy sauce to it, and they really didn't. It's just a little bit of soy sauce with the caramel coloring, and it's uh, Mr. Lee Gum Gay dark soy sauce for coloring only. So it's a little... When I say soy sauce, dark soy sauce, it's not really soy sauce, all right? It's liquid coloring, caramel. Then we're going to add some thin soy sauce. This is healthy boy brand thin soy sauce. We're going to add some Shaoxing wine, a little sweetness. And we'll add a little bit of white pepper. Now, white pepper is preferred. Dark pepper, everybody knows about Dark pepper is very spicy, it's a hard spicy. White pepper is spicy, but it's a not so hard flavor, not so hard spicy, okay? And we have baking soda, a little bit of baking soda that we're gonna add, and that will tenderize, that will break down any muscle further, okay? So let's prepare the items that we have. So let me show you as we do it. So here's the garlic. This is my cleaver, it's a uh, high, car high carbon steel cleaver. This is my garlic peel. Basically lay the clove on, boom. Okay, and so we'll take off the shell. Now, maybe in other videos, they already did this for you, but I want to show you how it's done. All right. And 
then basically you just chop it up. Now I love garlic, so I really do appreciate garlic, and garlic has a lot of good health benefits to it. Now the scallion, we already rinsed it, so we'll basically just take each one, cut the end off. Okay. And we're going to cut it in one inch pieces. Set it aside. Okay. So we'll set it aside. Then we're going to marinate the beef. Okay. You don't have to marinate the beef, but I recommend that you marinate the beef. So the beef has been sliced thinly. For a quick cooking, and I'm using flank steak. Now, I recommend any kind of any kind of beef with marbling in it. All right, why? Because it makes it more tender and there's more flavor. Now, if you work with a top round, you might not get as uh, flavorful, and it might be a little bit more tougher because when there's no marbling, it's all muscle, and these days, it's cheaper cut, but you know. I don't know what you want to, what's a trade off on that, okay? So we'll add a little bit of oyster sauce, a little bit, a little dash of thin soy sauce. We'll add some shaoxing oil, a little dash. And we'll add about a little bit of cornstarch. This is the sealer. And we'll add a little bit of white pepper. And this, by doing this, you're going to get a more tender, more flavorful um, beef. Okay. Now, when we cook the uh, beef, basically, we're going to cook it in olive oil, stir fried in olive oil, and you may and we'll add a little bit of sugar too. And you may say, well, doesn't olive oil have a high flash point burning? And it does. But when we do it for a stir frying, we're really not going to be um, cooking it for a long time. Okay? So let me remove all these items and we'll just stir this up, make sure everything's coated nicely. Alright? So as this is being Marinated. Go back up to me. So, we'll stick this in the fridge for a couple of minutes. We'll remove the uh, We'll bring forward wok and basically the actual stir fry is pretty quick right everything that takes time is in the preparation okay so I just want to let you know that so you know that ahead of time now I also during this time I wrote a cookbook and let me get the cookbook let me show you So if you like my videos, and remember, just around the corner is the holiday season. I mean, you may want to get something for somebody that has everything, but may not have a nice cookbook. This is my cookbook, my first cookbook. It's the You Can Do It Asian Cookbook by Chef Wu Ken. And in it, it contains 25 recipes from all over Asia. Vietnam, Malaysia, Korea, China, Japan, okay? And so, I give you a variety of recipes that you can cook 
They're very simple and easy. And these are my recipes. So I didn't steal a recipe from somebody else and change one or two ingredients and claim it's mine. These are mine, all right? And so it's easy reading. It's basically written the way I speak. And so I highly recommend it. It's on Amazon Books. You can check on the Amazon Books on the Chef Who Can or the search, the You Can Do It Asian Cookbook. All right, it's goodbye. It's uh, easy reading, and it it explains the why. Why do we do this? Why do we add this? Why? What? What kind of substitutes do we have? You know, do we always have to buy the ingredients that you state? And then I also list areas where you can order online through Amazon, through a couple e-commerce sites, as well as in your cities. You might have an H Mart or the Great Wall um, Chinese Market. And they have tons of, of um, ingredients to choose from. And I tell you exactly what ingredients I've used. And these ingredients that I've used, you're not using once. You're using many, many times with very, many various dishes. Okay? And then there's an a, a, a e-commerce ca called Say We. S-A-Y-W-E-E-E.com. In Maryland, they deliver. So depending on where you live, you know, they may be able to deliver too. So I give you the book that's all inclusive and it's easy reading, it's simple, you know, the recipes may look long, but I give those explanations. So I encourage you to purchase it, especially for the holidays. And if you want to add something to it, Chef Who Can, you can too. So get a mug. This is my mascot, our corgi, and it says Chef Who Can, I can too. So what a way to start the morning with a nice cup of coffee and this is on my Etsy account which I'll list on the description on the YouTube but let's get things going here so this is a high carbon steel wok okay high carbon steel wok I can have it at the highest temperature as, as high as I want I don't have to worry about it because with a carbon steel wok it the hotter it gets the more of a non-stick surface that develops. It's like the cast iron grill. You're going to have to season it. You'll do the same thing with a high carbon steel wok. Okay? So we're going to keep it on high. But if you have the easy nonstick pans, you may have to use medium. Okay? You'll never get the same flavor or aroma when you pick up a takeout dish. Because they're, 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 they're butane, their propane, their natural gas comes up this high. And the wok sits right on top of it. So you can imagine the intensity of the heat. We can't duplicate that depending on our grill. If it's a glass top, I would say just use medium. But if you have a stainless steel pan, you can use it on high if you want. And so that's important. Now the oil, I use virgin olive oil. Don't use processed virgin olive oil. A lot of companies are saying we're selling olive oil, but then you read the label, it says processed. Anything processed with oil is bad for you. Canola oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, salad oil, pecan, pecan, peanut oil, all processed and it's bad for us. All right, so for the time that we have been cooking, we're going to use it on high heat and we're using a virgin, regular virgin olive oil. So the pan is hot. This is a butane stove, so you have to consider that. And we add about maybe a quarter cup. Why? Because whenever we deal with noodles, right, it's going to stick, right? So by having more uh, oil, it prevents that stickiness. But when we're cooking the beef, we don't want it to stick either, right? So we'll wait until that oil is getting hot. It's uh, fuming a little bit. But this beef is going to be very good. So we want to cook the beef 85%. Why? Because you got to take it out. Gonna make the sauce, you gotta add the noodles, 
So then we add back the beef, so that extra 16% is gonna make the beef perfect. If I cook the beef at 100%, now, when I add the noodles and the sauce, it's gonna be over 100%. It's gonna be over, way overdone, it's gonna be perfect. You don't want that. So, let me show you. So, when I say 85%, you'll want a little pink one. Oh, the squash is not, the beef is not sticking to the wok. Now notice, the color is kind of grayish brown, right? Not very appetizing. And that's where the box soy sauce is coming to play. Okay? So, you see how the color is kind of putrid, right? So now we'll add the garlic. Now we'll add the noodles. We'll have to break the noodles a little bit. Okay. And we have to base it on how the noodles are doing well. In the restaurant, they had a lot of oil. You can even imagine how much oil they do just to prevent it from sticking. Right. We have a little sticky, and just swirl it around. You don't want to break it up, right? We'll add a little bit more oil. But at least you know that it's olive oil. So, yeah. If it's, a bit, if it's another kind of oil, like canola oil, and you're adding it's bad for you, right? All right? So, now let's add the flavor. So we'll add a little bit of new soy sauce. About two tablespoons. And a, a dash of oyster sauce. And a little bit of dark soy sauce to give it some color. Okay. Remember, it's not that we add a lot of soy sauce to the fish, so we make it look darker. It's really the caramel color. Okay. Let's add a little bit of the oyster sauce. Okay. Now we're going to add of the pork soy sauce to the beef. Okay. Now, we'll add it. And now we'll mix it all up. Now this is the traditional cold front. Other places, when they add carrots and, and celery and cabbage, this is really the original, and we'll be adding the scallion and the beef scallion. Okay. You just mix it. The beef scallion will cook based on the temperature of the noodles. Right. And always, always stir fry it. And eventually, the beef spout will cook very quickly. Right. I want to cook it that extra 15 percent, so you don't have to worry about you know all the cooked meat. Now, it doesn't look pretty, so let's grab one. 
Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Just fold it in. So you're gonna get a little stick. And this is the beef chow fun. Piping hot and delicious. I didn't add the uh, baking soda. That's an option for you. So I say flank steak is very tender, but if you have a top round and there's no marbling, I would add a little bit, maybe a quarter of a tablespoon of baking soda in the marinade altogether. And then I let it sit in the beef for around 15 minutes. And that will break up the muscle. With flank steak, you don't really have that much of a problem. But lately, buying flank steak, you're paying premium dollars because it's flank steak. But what did they feed the cow? So they may have to feed them really cheap feed, which doesn't help the uh, flank steak. So you have to be kind of careful, you gotta wage it. But this is very good. Now let's see how it tastes. All right, look at it. It's perfect, right? Now you want al dente? Mm. I got a nice chew. Scallion. Here goes with the beef. Mmm. Delicious. Fresh. Now, in the packet, noodles. It's this style of noodle, right? It's wide. You get two sleeves of noodles. I use one sleeve and I created this one dish. This is good enough for two people or maybe three people. You save money. I would say that this would probably cost around $16, $17, maybe $18. And you did it for the beef. I use one strip of beef. So I say four. Six bucks. So, and all the ingredients are oil is virgin, you know, virgin olive oil. A, dish, a dab of this and a dab of that is all you need. It's not overpowering the beef. You actually appreciate the flavor. And so, this is the way to go. This is the way to save money, all right? You take the flank steak, you cut it in three strips, save two strips, use the one strip for this dish, and then cut it thin. No, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, all right? And this is a very famous dish, so try it. Let me know how it goes, okay? And Chef Wu can, you can too. And when you actually do one, then you say, I can too. So get a mug. And I'll have it posted on Etsy. It's really cute. So, from the great state of Maryland, aloha. Stay tuned. Subscribe. I always appreciate all my subscribers. You have helped me out a lot. I'm approaching that 1,000 viewers, subscribers, which is good. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Give me a comment. I'm more than willing to talk to you. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to me. Okay? Thank you very much, and Chef Wu can, you can too.